um, budget uh, 2024 budget presentations of defense. The, as we all know, MPA is a high revenue generation and operational agency in this country, very, very dear to the country. And um, we believe that uh, this, is, this is the second time we are meeting on this issue, but this is the first time we are discussing, we are receiving your budget. The previous budget, the last time we met officially was when you were here on the issue of 2023 budget. And now you are here to present and defend your 2024 budget. So without uh, wasting time, let's allow you to do the presentation and uh, we'll now uh, uh, ask you questions regarding the 2024 budget. Thank you. Your invitation, and I wish to start by thanking the members and the chairman for the cordial working relationship we have had and for the opportunity to appear before you today. The 2024 budget estimate is projected to be 629.89 billion. Uh, there's a booklet with the breakdown there. Uh, for expenditure, the total projected expenditure for 2024 stands at 464.32 billion, which is divided into operating expenses of 212 billion and capital expenditure estimated at 252.29 billion. In 2024, uh, the main thrust of the budget is the urgent need to rehabilitate and reconstruct the aging port infrastructure and also to modernize our, our equipment. The defects we have observed include those of the key walls, replacement of all gravity walls, rehabilitation of escravos breakwater in the Delta or Worry Port, and this is aimed at improving port efficiency and ensuring that we increase revenue and get back some of the uh, cargo that we have been losing to other countries. Nigerian Ports Authority, working with the Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy, has been in uh, discussions with the UK, UK, UKF, that's United Kingdom Export Finance and Afri Exim, and we believe that um, that will soon be resolved. On the booklet you have is a breakdown of the budget on the first page shows you the sources of revenue, cargo dues, ship dues, concession, and admin. And you have a breakdown of the total amount expected, which amounts to that 629.8 billion. And um, I shall present. MD, can, can you take us on this budget? Can you take us on this page by page, yeah? Okay, on page, um, on page one. Is a break dago which is 217.6 billion. The breakdown of it is on page four. So on page four, you now see what constitutes cargo revenue, which is the port PS, royalty charges, oil terminal dues, wharf age, facility charge, environmental protection levy, and harbor dues. A combination of that gives you that 217.6 billion on page four. The next is uh, revenue from uh, vessel and ships, which is 237.9 billion. On page four and five, you find the breakdown of it. And that one is broken down into ship dues, berthing and mooring, berth rent, towage services, compulsory pilotage royalty, annual conservancy charge, service boat operations, barge operation charges, and passenger boat, revenue from passenger boats. And the total of that gives you 237.9 billion. The next one is revenue from concessions. That's from our terminal operators, which is 129.3 billion. You find the breakdown on page five of the booklet, and that is divided into just two. It's divided into lease fees and throughput fees, because terminal operators also, apart from paying lease fees, they pay throughput fees. Then admin revenue is from page five to page seven. 
Admin revenue is from page 5 to page 7, and it starts from dividends from our JVs, and then we have fines and penalties, pay license, estate rent for people that are leasing our lands, sale and auction of any government assets, canteen returns, we have a canteen that uh, we generate a little revenue, tender and bid fees, registration of companies, permits, hire of planes and talks, haulage services, documentation, fire coverage, and MPS share of the port development to Debbie. Uh, rent from our properties in London, water supply to vessels, and electronic call-up system that we have in Apapa. The total of that gives you 44.9 billion. So these four sources of revenue, when you add them, it gives you the projected revenue of 629.8 billion naira. For the expenditure, um, on the same page one, we see short-term employee benefits. And on page eight, you see the breakdown of short-term employee benefits, which is divided into consolidated salary, rent allowance, leave grant, and furniture allowance. This is for about 4,000 of our staff. Uh, that is about 54.5 billion. Then short-term employee benefits and other staff costs. That is on page eight and page nine. And in it you see the overtime allowance, responsibility allowance, call duty, repatriation for officers on retirement, medical and hazard allowance, shift allowance for our pilots, productivity allowance, transfer expenses for officers in service. Then pensioners association, we have about 8,000 pensioners. They have an association. Their expense is uh, 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 budgeted for virtual allowance, employee welfare expenses, medical and occupational health promotional programs. The total of that gives you uh, that amount of 5.9 billion. Then the other one is overhead cost, where you have towage services and other supplies, 46.7 billion. Repairs and maintenance, 5.2. Towage and sewage services and other supplies is on page 9 and page 10. On page 9, you see towage and mooring and pilotage services. Uh, uh, Steve Dorin, payment for dock labor services, cargo survey expenses. On page 10, it continues monitoring, evaluation, and compliance operations, operational security, service charge for revenue monitoring office stationaries, electricity and lightning, fuel and lubricant, water supply, gas, hire of plants and metal consumables. Um, the next one is uh, repairs and maintenance, which is on page 10 and page 11. So repairs of uh, office and buildings, roads and sidings, erosion control within the port, especially in Calabar. That's where we have major erosion issues. Repairs and maintenance of vessels and crafts, repairs and maintenance of plants, vehicles, furniture, office furniture, office fixtures, internet and website services, IT infrastructure, fire engines. One of the requirements in the, uh, in, in, in the ports is that we should have fire trucks and fire engines, so servicing them. The maintenance of generators, port lightning, we are responsible for providing electricity and network and communication. That is a total of 5.2 billion. Administrative expenses are on page 12 to page 16. Starting from local training to overseas training for our pilots and harbors department for their certification, travel and subsistence to invitations and other courses and so on and so forth, NYSE allowance, professional development, David. So the whole of that page has both medicals, foreign and local. We are supposed to have clinics in each port location. It's a requirement that if a vessel comes to port, you should have a clinic that should be able to treat the pilots in the vessel coming into the country. So we have standard clinics at port locations, um, hotel and then ground. And so that is it up to page 16. Uh, it's a breakdown of almost about seven pages. That is the administrative expenses from page 12 to page 16. And on page 16, you have insurance. 
insurance is not just for our assets and buildings and what have you, but also we have to insure all the vessels uh, that we own, P&I insurance. We also provide insurance in case of any marine accident that we are liable to as an authority uh, by a visiting vessel. So that is the essence of provision for uh, insurance. And then there is a sinking fund for Lake Deep Sea Port. Nigerian Port Authority is supposed to put a certain amount of money in dollars in the sinking fund because that was the condition resident to the loan given for uh, development of Lake Deep Sea Port. But it's an amount that is not touched, it's under the supervision of the DMO, under the Federal Ministry of Finance. And those are the breakdowns, um, sir. On page two are the capital expenditures, which include buoys, capital dredging, fire engines, generators, ICT software. Uh, the total of it, that's from page two to page three, is capital expenditure. Um, and it's a total of 252.2 billion, as we have mentioned. And we have made provision also for the loan that we are negotiating between us, the Federal Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy, and the Federal Ministry of Finance for complete rehabilitation of the ports in Nigeria. That's Tinkan, Apapa, Wari, Kalaba, Rivers, One ports will all be rehabilitated due to the current state they have. Um, the other ones are. I have already discussed them. Yes. So, Chairman, I have a present. Can you just tell us about this dredging? Dredging, please. Mm -hmm. just want, can you just tell us about the dredging? Okay, so, um, some water all over the place. But for every vessel coming into the country, there is a path that vessel must pass. And those are the channels. That part we recognize it as our channel. It's our responsibility to ensure that the channel is safe, is properly marked. Now, vessels when coming in the past, if you have a draft of say seven, eight meters in the past, it was okay. So I'm talking about probably 50, 70, 80 years ago. But now you have vessels that are bigger in size. They, they are LOA, that's length overall is longer, over 300 meters. They therefore need deeper drafts. So you must have a dredging company that will consistently dredge these channels. There's also what we call buoys. They are navigational aids that will show the pilot where to turn left, where to turn right, depending on the color of the buoys and the, the signal it is emitting. Also, you will have uh, uh, wrecks that could actually be a kilometer away in the water this year. Next year, those wrecks, nature will draw them towards the channel. That dredging company has that responsibility. Now, when you dredge, let's say, 16 meters deep, and you want to move, let's say, 14 meters, and you want to move from 14 to 16 meters, that dredging between 14 to 16 meters is what you call capital dredging. But when you want to maintain a channel at 16 meters, that is maintenance dredging. So we do more of maintenance dredging because nature brings in silt. That's what they call siltation. Some of the channels are quite long. Siltation is very high, so you must keep sweeping it. On a quarterly basis, there is supposed to be a survey chart produced by the dredging company and sent to only one organization in the world. That's the UKHO. The UKHO, uh, right? Yeah, IHO. They will confirm and verify that, uh, what do you call it, that chart, and then publish it worldwide. The essence here is when the vessel is coming to Nigeria for the first time, it has something that is authenticated by one organization. So if you don't dredge and send in those, those charts on a quarterly basis, vessels will not come in because they are actually blind in the water unless there is a chart telling them how to come in. Now currently we have two channel management companies in operations, uh, the one in Lagos and then the one in uh, Boni or Ne River Spot. Calabar Channel uh, is in court. But we are settling it out of court and we believe shortly that matter should be resolved within the month of April. Escravos has never been has never had a channel dredging, I mean channel management company. 
we're about to do that. But first of all, we need to rehabilitate the breakwater. The breakwater has collapsed and is increasing siltation into the channel. Um, it's among the things that we are lending, we are trying to borrow money to construct because it's an extremely capital intensive project that will not be able to show that by ourselves. The chairman, dear colleagues, I know that the MD will agree that our waterways are full of wreckages. And from your explanation, one, I'd like to know if the dredging company is also removing wreckages. If yes, fine. If no, from your explanation, it means that what the dredging companies are doing is avoiding the wreckages and creating channels that has nothing to do with the wreckages. Fine. That's avoiding wreckages to save costs. But how long do you avoid wreckages? Because wreckages are a constant thing that happens on our waterways. So I'm bothered that you have no provision for wreckage removals. And if you have, you can let us know. But my advice ultimately is that while you are dredging, knowing, knowing fully that for as long as you avoid the wreckages, how long do we do that? And wreckages will keep occurring from time to time because of abandonment of our, you know, you know, uh, ships that have sunk. So I like to know, and that's my advice. If you don't have budget to that thing, we must also try and provide for removal of wreckage so that over time we do not get saturated by wreckages. I have seen your budget. Uh, proposals and also reading the budget estimates. You made mention about the implementation of the 25 year national port master plan. I quote that will guide investments in port expansions, new port developments, multimodal transportation for cargo evacuation. MD, looking at the natural draft distances between port to port, and be bearing in mind uh, deep sea port. Are there any other considerations or applications for proposals for port development that would include southeast? And also bearing in mind the Onitsha inland waterways. Are there still ongoing dredging activities in that inland waterway? Thank you. Direct question to MD. Um, uh, you have, MD, you made mention that you have two sources of fund funding your budget. You have um, uh, loan sourcing and your gross internal generated revenue. And uh, your total budget is 464 billion point something. You have page one. Sources of fund. You have loan sources and gross internally generated revenue. So your gross internally generated revenue is 629.8 billion while you have 200 billion as loan so considering your 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 total budget of 464.3 billion 406 personal overhead and capital total is 400 and 64, right? So, um, uh, with this, your internal generated revenue, why do you need um, uh, loan sourcing as part of your budget funding? Because we are expecting balance from this, your internal generated revenue. We, we are expecting budget of uh, balance of about 165 billion.
maybe to be remitted to federal government. So I, it's, it's such a kind of confusion. I don't know, Mr. Chairman. All right, Thank sir. you. They maintain aids to navigation, and they are not dodging wrecks. Any wreck that is posing a threat to the channel, before it gets into the channel, they'll take it off. Some wrecks have been there for probably five years. Nature brings them closer. So any wreck within our channel is their responsibility. But Nemasa is the uh, MDA responsible for removal of wrecks nationwide. But ours is to remove wrecks within our own channels to ensure uh, safety. Um, what I mean by Calabar dredging is in court. I mean, the, the matter is subsidies, but you know, sir, that, that the, 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 the company that was giving that dredging company probably about 10 years ago had gone to court because of a disagreement with Nigerian Post Authority. But um, the Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy, the minister, this minister has requested that that matter should be resolved amicably out of court. We have an instruction to that effect. We have been holding meetings as the MPA team and the JV partners team have been holding meetings on how to resolve that matter, pay what we think is due to them, and then they write of what we don't think is due to them. And then we will now come up with a dredging plan. Calabar Channel is one of the longest channels, if not the longest, actually. So we need to plan on what to dredge, how deep to dredge, so we need to survey. So I cannot tell you to tell your people dredging will start now, but eventually it will start, Honorable. Sorry? Hello, sir. Yes, that's what we are budgeting because the process of reconciliation, legal settlement, out of court settlement, everybody will file, and there are so many existing issues. There are, there are disagreements between MPA and them. But we have now decided it's high time we meet ourselves somewhere and then resolve this matter. No, no problem. Well, MD. Then, I, yes, sir. So, sorry. Let me. MD, on this channel, Calabar channel, you know yes. the area concern. Do you understand? Yes, and we sir. believe that if properly done, it will improve on our economic uh, development. Yes, sir. So that's why we are concerned about this Calabar. We have been, the last time you came here, we talked about Calabar channel. Yes. And you recall that you promised us that, that, that before now that you, that you will tackle it. But even up to now, nothing has been done. But sir, we, believe, you know, we need. We need a firm because we need to. We are going back for instance. You also need to take something back. That look, that the firm promise is that by the time before those two weeks, three weeks, that this matter will be resolved. So that they also, we are happy that we have already uh, allocated some funds. That means there's there's progress. Yes, but we also need some uh, firm uh, commitment. So that we know that uh, this thing will be uh, done properly, please. And them. So we have been meeting, even last week there was a meeting. I cannot commit here that the matter in court will be pulled out next week or next two, three weeks. But I can commit that all things being equal within this year, Calabar Channel will be dredged. The dredging will commence. I promise you that. Then secondly, we are also rehabilitating, Calabar Port is one of the places we are also rehabilitating the facilities. So just to show you, we can't rehabilitate something, then we will not be able to get vessels into the place. So yes, okay. uh, Calabar Channel, all things being equal, uh, it, should, it should start. The second, the third question was um, the 25-year port master plan. Now, currently, MPA is waiting for any proponent, anybody, whosoever, that is interested in development of deep sea or any other port, irrespective of the location. As long as there is a body of water that will get to that location. Ours is to advise whether it is profitable, whether it is feasible or not. So far, we haven't received a formal uh, um, uh, request for, you understand, um, support from anywhere, yes, or collaboration from the southeast. But we have seen announcements about one or two ports. I've discussed it with somebody that had made that announcement that for it to develop, you need to get Nigerian Post Authority involved. But they are currently uh, proposals uh, for, you know, uh, uh, you know the one some, somewhere in Boni, uh, there's another one, Ibom, uh, Ibaka, uh, Ondo, and so on and so forth. As for Onisha, inland uh, dry port is under the purview of Nigerian inland waterways. Ours is to encourage the movement of cargo using barges from our port into that port location. 
and that has started from Monet actually, and they have started going around for, you know, trying to sensitize people that actually cargo can move to on its inland dry port from any other port. Uh, you ask if dredging is taking place there, that one also is the responsibility of uh, Nigerian Inland Waterways Authority. Um, the two sources of revenue, um, yes, so um, let me explain it this way. Left on to us, we would rather use the revenue we have and develop the port. But however, this time is critical. Government needs funds. Government needs money to carry out other responsibilities ASAP. And we thought the best option, because, okay, so 2024, we are projecting about 165 billion transfer into CRF. Even if you give it to us, it's not going to be enough. So the best would have been to borrow money with three-year moratorium, and then you pay it over 15 years. So that way, every year, we still send the money we have to government, you understand? And then we now have little money to service the loan. Because of liquidity issues, you understand, it's going to be really tight. Because when you start constructing the ports, you must have that money on ground. It's not like a house where you build, when you get to DPC, you wait, when you get money, you go to Linta, and then you roof. Because they are going to shut down that port. Construction is expected to be for three years for each port location. So that fund must be available. You cannot delay because it will affect the economy, it will affect the throughput and output, and then it will also affect the revenue of the Nigerian Post Authority. So we have liaised with government and given a proposal whether we can use our revenue, and government is saying it's best you transfer the money to CRF while you go and find another source of uh, funding the port rehabilitation, and that's what we are working on now. Um, uh, um, uh, you know, as you said, the expected construction period could be three years. And uh, you, your estimate, you're, you're, you're projecting that your internet generator revenue could be up to 629 billion in 2024. So with that figure, I think, um, uh, you know, we should, we should be at least at mercy of this loan, loan, everything loan. At least we can plan well. Instead of you to, to, to you know, give hope that you're going to remit 165 billion to federal coppers. You know, if you can adjust and, you know, make a good plan, I'm thinking there may be no need for, you know, borrowing. You know, it's, it's like an extra burden to the, to the economy. But I don't know, maybe if you can explain to me. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Honorable colleagues, uh, Mr. MD, I want to ask why. Because in every budget estimate, bringing to the floor of the House Committee on Border and Labor like this, you are expected to come along with your last year budget performance. If we can get that now, we are in position to advise like what my honorable colleague said now. So areas to advise you to continue, areas to advise you to discontinue. So the budget performance will now allow us to speak better on that. So we want you to furnish this honorable committee why you failed to come along with your budget performance of 2023. My second question, let's open to page 12. So under uh, administrative expenses, you quoted number 12, 13, 14, page 12, medical expenses drug that will go up 1 billion, 260 million, 175,237, and uh, number 13, medical expenses, local, 1 billion, 5 million, and that, that. Number 14, medical expenses, foreign, 750 billion, totaling 3 billion plus. Can you furnish this August committee? Why? 
an owl. I follow a rider to that. A rider to that. Yeah. A rider. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. On the same page, um, local train, I mean overseas training. Over foreign training on the same page. Is page, 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 11. page 11. Local training. Local training. And foreign training. And foreign training. So you have foreign training, which is 2.7 billion for foreign training. And you have local training for 3.1 billion. So the higher, some of them are too high. Well, can you explain why these discrepancies, discrepancies come in that way? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my own question, actually they've, start, they've asked the, uh, the fundamentals, but I'm going to the budget. This is the budget estimate now. Uh, maybe if we have had the, I'm not sure if they are listening. Can I go ahead? Okay. Um, maybe if we had the last year's budget, comparing with this, maybe we'll be able to talk about what I'm thinking is, um, this is an approval of your expenses. And, excuse me. This is, we are here to approve your budget, both income um, and expenditure. We have all these figures here, but we don't have. We don't know the basis of your calculation. Is it just a vague estimate or based on calculation? Because I know before you arrive at a figure, for example, if we take uh, concession, how you intend to raise money, you have, I mean, some paperwork on this estimate that you have here, or is it just a guesswork? I mean, because an accountant, we have a I mean, basis for calculating this uh, revenue and expedition. That's maybe in uh, conjunction with what they've asked. To send to our hospitals, we have each, each, each port has a clinic. These clinics are furnished to a large extent. Some of them have x ray machines. It's supposed to be a standard clinic that is supposed to provide instant and basic medical services to our staff, which are 4,000, and our pensioners, which are 8,000. So we are providing medical services and drugs to 12,000 persons. And the older you get, the more medical attention you need. So that is the drugs. For local, there are some things that we, our clinics, cannot attend to. So we refer our staff and the same pensioners is in the condition of service of the authority. When you retire after a certain years of service in MPA, till you die, MPA will provide medicals for you. There are some things that we don't have the expertise, our doctors cannot treat, or we do not have the equipment. So we have retainer hospitals. We also have federal medical centers in all geopolitical zones for our retirees. In Enugu, in Benin Kebis, in I think Akwaibom or somewhere. When these retirees go there, we also pay those, uh, those bills. So that is what the medical is. Now this is based on the projection of what had happened last year. The medical expense is foreign also. Now, our condition of service allows that some of the medical issues be referred to foreign hospitals also. There are also times you have accidents and issues at the local port, our responsibility is to pay for that, especially by visiting pilots. The overseas training, we have specialized departments. We have pilots, we have mooring men, we have uh, tugboats and, and so on and so forth. They are supposed to have a certain certification. You must send them on a foreign course and they get certified. Without it, they cannot even bring in those vessels. And this is the cost. We are trying to create a training school locally here in Nigeria. Uh, we found one of our buildings, and we are trying to get certification by Nimasa and other places. Then we will start doing the bridge simulator, which we already have, but it needs to be certified. So this is it. And then even because of ISPS code compliance is also. Uh, 
our security di division, some of them must be trained to be able to have certification as it relates to provision as ISPS standards. The U.S. Coast Guard is coming in the next two weeks, and they relate with only certified security experts that are working with Nigerian Post Authority. So this overseas training has to do with training of specialized departments that must be certified. Unfortunately, we can't get that certification from any school locally here in Nigeria. Uh, MD, I have a few concerns and I want to take you through them. I am aware that uh, in line with uh, page 14, in line with the requirement of uh, MAPOL, uh, you do receive waste at your various ports, and that is paid for by the vessels as they arrive. So I do not know how that becomes part of your expenses uh, relative to African Circle, because ACL is African Circle Limited. I, I was thinking that the way it's done is that they are the ones that receive this waste and they get paid. I don't know if uh, the policy has changed that you now have to pay African Circle. That's on page 14. Yes. And um, if you go to, can I continue, sir? Yes, please. If you look at uh, number 35, uh, you talked about environmental cleaning and beautification for 3.4 billion. I, I am beginning to imagine uh, how beautiful the Yone port will be, how beautiful the, the Portacot Wharf will look like if we invest this much in the, and there are no details of the, the beautification. For the other ones, maybe there's a difference between expenses and remuneration, we we'll understand, but there would have been need to provide us with a few details, that's just my opinion. Then if you go to page 17, sir. I do not know where you call Okrika Jetty. And Cocoa Port, is there still any activity at Cocoa Port? The only jetty we have at Okrika is an NNPC facility. Which other jetty do you have in Okrika? Page, okay. page 20. Page 20, number four. Number four. You are spending a billion naira erecting a intruder mesh, and you are saying it's in line with the requirements of ISPS. How then did your port get certified? If you have not been able to meet with the requirements of ISPS code as, a, as, as expected, how did you get certified? Because that you are erecting concrete walls now and putting mesh, uh, even uh, your access control, because that is what it, 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 it entails. I begin to wonder if you are really working for the interests of this country. Uh, yes, because you should have your AS, ISPS code cert certifications before you can even operate. So if this is the time you want to get this done, I don't know how you got the, the approval. I am worried. I, am, I don't work with you, sir, so I wouldn't no, know the details. No, no, no. That's why we're asking, sir. If you get to page uh, 21, sir, you're talking about observatory towers at the following locations, and you provided only one location, Taco no, Bay. Number one, number what, please? Number two. Okay. Page 21, office buildings number two. You said at the following locations. I didn't read English, but I expected that when you say following locations, it should be more than one. Then I will end with page, with page 25, number four and number six. What is the difference between the row D on number four and the row D on number six? What is the difference, sir? Page 14, number 43. Actually, African Cycle does not collect the money. The money is remitted to Nigerian Post Authority and based on agreed sharing formula and sharing ratio, we pay African Cycle. So that is the provision there on page 43. There has never been a time African Cycle is paid directly. MP has always paid African Cycle. We get the money and then we pay them based on the agreed sharing ratio. 
Environmental cleaning, yeah, Nigerian Post Authority is responsible for cleaning of all common user areas. So MPA has to make provisions for these all port locations. You also have lands that are overgrown by grass that you need to cut, you need to clean the environment, you need to clean the offices. So we put the money in bulk. We have six ports. The seventh port has now come in place. So it's our responsibility. Currently in Lagos, we also are cleaning the access road to the ports. A few weeks ago, you must have seen pictures of what is happening. You know, people are just heaping garbage along the road. So this is the cost of cleaning the ports. You also pay to clean those ports because we do not employ people, uh, you understand, to clean them. We give out the cleaning of the port locations. If you go to Oni, as you said, it's quite a beautiful port. Uh, it's well cleaned. All the ports are cleaned, especially the common user areas. Page, page what? by an Nigerian Post Authority, but NNPC is using it. So we provide, uh, we provide generator, electricity, fire service, fire, fire backup, and so on and so forth. In fact, we are even supposed to, I think we built a small administrative building there, maybe last year or so, I can't remember. So it's owned by an Nigerian Post Authority, but NNPC is operating it, and we have an agreement. It's an old agreement, probably over 20 or 30 years, I don't know. But MPA owns uh, Okri Kajeti. Coco Port is also... Yeah, they pay for usage, yes. They pay for usage. Well, it's when they have products. We, ours is just to maintain it, yeah. So, but it's, MP, it's NNPC that's using it. Coco Port has been given out to an operator who has started operations there. Um, the facilities also need to be worked on. Uh, we need to provide uh, electricity, there is no electricity there. So when they are operating, there ought to be a generator that is uh, serving them. Page, um, page 20. So the erection of anti trudan mesh and concrete fence. We got certified, the ports that have been certified, ISO certified, are the ports of One and Calabar. However, there are certain parts of the port that were encroached by community. Um, when, that, when, when the port started, long ago, there was need for expansion. The Nigerian Post Authority exchanged land with the, with the uh, Cross River State Government, right? In Calabar. Now, the state did not pay compensation, which was the state's responsibility, and communities encroached on that land. But now we have agreed that we will pay for that, uh, what do you call it, for that compensation. So we need to fence that land to bring it back into the main uh, port. That way we are protecting it even if it is not in use. But that land has actually been allocated to people for logistics and other businesses, but they were not able to use it because of uh, community encroachment. Then also there will be, there, there is, I think it was, is it, uh, I think it's Tinkan, yeah. Tinkan is in the middle of the city, in the middle of the town. There are certain sections of it that people have been bringing down the see-through fence. We are now changing it to concrete fence. But we have already used concrete fence in at least over 90% of uh, uh, Tinkan. We now need to just conclude it with this. Page, um, page 21 is, a, is an error, but uh, we are providing that at uh, Takwa Bay. Page, what page again? That's it? I, I think that is it. If you look at page 18E, you have ICT software for 1.7 billion. Yes. You have, um, if you go to ELF, you have IT infrastructure for 2.7 billion. Then go to the next page, page 19. You have uh, IT infrastructure, infrastructure networking and communication for 3.5. That's, that's a whooping sum of close to 8 billion under IT. And if you look at each of the line items, you can't even quantify the price of those things. Like I take, I take you for uh, on on F, upgrade of data, upgrade of data center and high availability for three hundred million. And number four, it's just the same thing. It's the same thing, the same thing. Because upgrade of data is upgrade of data. Then you go to uh, E number five, yeah, harbor automation. The, the harbor, is it not automated already? Is it a new harbor? Then you go to the next page. So in that particular 
section, you're spending so much, eight billion for just IT. I think the committee needs to sit down with you on, on that, please. Mm. You are deploying software. Software licenses have, yes, you must pay on a yearly basis. For instance, we are using Oracle, Oracle Hyperion, Oracle Financial, Oracle Budgeting and all that. Anyone that uses Oracle and HR, Oracle HR, mm. for you to use Oracle HR, you must pay per head. If we have 4,000 MPA staff uses, using Oracle HR, you must pay for 4,000 persons using that. Everybody, Google it, please, and see how Oracle. That's how Oracle makes money. But it's a fantastic system. So you must provide for those licenses. We have what they call ESEN, Electronic Ship Entry Notice. It's an app that you must pay the license. I've been sure at the point of purchase, it's not just plug and play, it's and then much. you never pay forever. No, that is what the money. software licenses are. Please, please, please. Um, let's take it easy. Let me, let me uh, answer your own because it's very critical too. Because we are rounding up. The, the, actually, the last time we were here, we were, we were, I think we were here the last time we met with it. Oh, you left? Okay, sorry. We actually discussed the issue of 2023 budget. You understand? So maybe that's the reason why they did not come up with that same budget. And when we went to Lagos, not everybody went to Lagos with us. We also discussed the issue of uh, budget, the same 2023. You understand? But I believe that the next time, uh, MD, please, if you are coming, please come with the, the previous budget. Please, next time. We all. We all knew in this oh, thing, uh, this uh, assembly. This, this is our first uh, budget uh, uh, defense uh, presentation. Then, secondly, Zana, relax. <laughs> Sat, relax. <laughs> Sat, relax now. Please, 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 I'm coming. Please, 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 wait. We have. I think. I think the, the the most important thing, MD. We are very very interested in this Calabar. I promise you that Calabar will be dredged this year. Yeah. Not in Benin. We are, we are very interested. Thank you. The 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 honourable colleagues, wait now. Honourable, oh wait. Honourable colleagues, please, please. I think I think I think we're exhausted. You answer those questions. And uh, it shows that it shows that this sound is uh, on ground. He knows what he's doing, frankly speaking. And that was why I allowed we allowed everything to let it flow. So that we are we are it because this is actually our first project. I believe that subsequent projects and the existing the managing director will do better and also we will do better. But let's give a grace for this our first project. So in view of that, think we, we, we also believe that we, the committee need to visit some of the uh, we need to visit uh, some of the uh, facilities outside from the ports outside Lagos. For the last time we were in Lagos. This staff force, we need to visit the staff force. Once we come back from, uh, after, uh, once we resume after this staff after, after Salah, this time, we would like to visit the force because most of the things we are telling us, we also need to see them. That's how, that's how the National Assembly operates. House of Prep is a very strong place. House of Prep is not the other side. They're very strong. <laughs> budget, eh? Budget. I'm telling you, budget belongs to House of Prayer. Screening of candidates or whatever belongs to the Senate. So, so the, the, just know that once we resume, we would like to visit those spots. We would like to see Calabar. <laughs> Uh, and uh, even on there, 
and some of the ports, both in the east and there. So please, take note of that. And also, we also discussed the issue of CSR. It's very important to us. But we have seen the, the budget. We accepted it, and we'll move further with it. Thank you. So in absence of uh, every other discussion, can someone move for adjournment? <laughs> that. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> respected colleagues, MD and his team, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm very happy for you to accept the entire team of NPA, and I'm sure Mr. MD has taken your advice from day one and he appeals the House of Representatives are his friends. I move for the MD and his team to take a ball and go successfully to their respective place of abode. I move, sir. Thank you, the chair. I remain right honorable Kabir Alassar from Kano, I represent the Honorable Chibi Federal Constituency. In the absence of any other thing, I second the motion as moved by Engineer Honorable Sakoni. In case of every other thing, those in favor that we should uh, adjourn Senate say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it.